توبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون. Indeed, somebody who is living a purposeful Islamic life is seen as غريب. غريب being a stranger. And being a stranger is not a good feeling to have relates to what our Sheikh was speaking about, the element of identity. Everybody feels the need to have an identity. And if you are living a life of Islamic purpose and there aren't many who are sharing the same vision or upon the straight and narrow that you are upon, uh, then it becomes a little bit daunting. And thus it seems to be boring, backward, dark, lonely. However, if you were to find yourself a circle of people, Say, for example, the brothers and sisters you have met in this convention, as an example. We are all here for one purpose, and that is to glorify Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And to team up, all of a sudden, working towards Allah and the home of the hereafter becomes a lot more colorful. And indeed, what is the meaning of color in the absence of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu in our life? And the absence of pursuing Jannah and fearing running away from the hereafter, running away from the hellfire. Here, brothers and sisters, I want to address one thing which I think may contribute to the boring outlook that some of us have towards the godly living or the purposeful, meaningful living. The aspect of understanding the term ibadah. What does worship even mean? Where Allah, he tells us, for example, only reason I have created man and the jinn is so that they may worship me. There is no other reason. Perhaps for many of us, the very first thing that comes to mind when we hear the term ibadah worship is bowing on prostration and the recitation of the Quran and fasting the long days of the summer and praying the long nights of the winter. And this is some of the highest levels of worship, don't get me wrong, but is it exclusive to that? And the answer is no. The scholars are teaching us that anything that a person does, so long as it fulfills two criteria, in the eyes of Allah, it's an act of ibadah. What are the two conditions? Can anybody tell us the first? What is the first condition? Sorry? The niyyah, the niyyah. The intention. The intention is to glorify Allah. The intention is to please Allah. But is the intention enough? Is the intention enough? The answer is no. Some of those who blow themselves up in marketplaces, they have good intentions, believe it or not. But in the eyes of Allah, they are doomed. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was killed in the name of what? Paganism? Ali radiallahu anhu was killed in the name of Islam. Abu Lu'lu'at al-Majusi was the one who killed Umar radiallahu anhu, the fire worshipper. But the killer of Ali and the killer of Uthman, they were Muslims. And they were worshippers of Allah. They were harder in worship than you and I are. Believe me. In fact, the Messenger وسلم, said to his companions, when you see how they worship Allah, you will belittle your worship in comparison to this. And you will belittle your Quran in comparison to them. He said, but they are the dogs of the hellfire. Yeah? So intention on its own is not enough. It is a condition. But there has to be another, which is maybe another answer from our sisters. Compliance to the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The intention and compliance to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu if these two conditions are found in anything you do guess what in the eyes of allah jalla jalaluhu it is an act of worship having matrimonial relations with your spouse is a sadaqa a charity in the eyes of allah but not any matrimonial relation when the intention is there when the intention is there i remember speaking to a um, a friend of mine, a teacher, and he said to me when we were in Yemen studying with our Sheikh, somebody came and knocked on the door. So I got up to open the door for the guest. Sheikh said to me, wait, Ya Fulan, so and so, what is your intention when you open the door? I said, my intention is to open the door. He said, ah, okay, you stay sat down, I'm going to open the door. He said, I felt like a thunderbolt had just hit me. What did I do wrong? Isn't that what people usually intend? 
So he opened the door and he came back and he said to my brother, I did not mean to offend you. I asked you what your intention was. I wanted to see if you are smart enough to convert your footsteps to the door and make it an act of worship. He said to him, how? Well, he said, look at the intentions I put for this. I intended to walk towards my brother in order to relieve him from the sun outside. And I intended to greet him with the greeting of salam and therefore our sins, our sins, they fall away. And I intended that I put my hand in his hand in Musafaha in order to fulfill the sunnah of the messenger. I intended to smile in his face and therefore that will be a sadaqah on my scales. I intended to bring him into my home in order to be a generous Muslim. And he listed around 30 or 40 intentions. This is called business, huh? tijara. Some people are offended when we hear the term tijara, trading with Allah. You make it a material thing. Ya akhi, Allah uses the term tijara, trade in the Quran. We are trading with Allah. Allah. Those who recite the book of Allah. And they established a prayer. And they spend from what we have given them publicly and privately. Yarjuna what? Tijara. Yarjuna tijaratan lan tabur. They are putting their hopes in a trade that will not fail. In a trade that will not fail. Going back to the discussion, brothers and sisters, plug in the intention. Our sisters who are raising. The reformers and the revivalists and the ulama. If your intention is there, what can we do to catch up with that? Brothers who are working on their sites, working as farmers, as taxi drivers, working, cleaning the streets. What is your intention? Some of the scholars have said, I wish that there would be a group of scholars whose purpose in life was to teach people maqasiduhum fil haya, how to set the correct intention. Halaqa for fiqh, halaqa for tafsir, halaqa for history, halaqa for Arabic language. I wish there would be a study circle where the sheikh has no purpose in life but to teach people the science of setting the intention. In the field of alchemy, it's a superstitious uh, science whereby they were trying to convert uh, me meaningless stones, worthless stones into gold and diamond right led into gold yeah it hasn't really happened till this day but there are some people who really believe that they will reach a day when they can convert these stones into precious material as muslims we have that transformer we've always had that transformer it's called the niya the intention it doesn't transfer uh, stone from being stone to gold. No, it transfers your worldly doings into a hasana that will remain with you forever and will bring you to Jannah. Yeah, the niyyah, brothers and sisters. And that is why Mu'adh, he would say, as Bukhari narrates, I fall asleep at night and my intention is that Allah is going to reward me for every second I sleep the same way I hope he's going to reward me for my night prayer. Why? Because he has put an intention with his salah excuse me, he has put an intention for his sleep and therefore Allah Jalla Jalaluhu rewards him for every second that he spends or we spend snoring at night because there is an intention. With that, the concept of worship becomes colorful and dynamic and excited in the masjid and out of the masjid as well. Wallahu alam. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I hope this video was helpful for you and this may help others too. So please consider sharing on your network. We will bring a lot more videos on the channel. So please consider subscribing and we'll see you soon inshallah.